The Corsair Carbide Air 540 High Airflow Cube Case is great for air cooling or liquid cooling. Check the link in the video description to learn more. It's finally here, guys, the fire test with the IOSafe N2 fireproof, waterproof NAS. Now, I was going to do something kind of ghetto with our fire test that wouldn't really have been safe. And so I reached out to Western Digital, <clears throat> makers of the ever popular WD Red. These are our preferred NAS drives around here. Speaking of preferred, which NAS drives did you buy, Slick? Four 3TB WD Reds. Four 3TB WD Reds, and did you get those for free or sponsored in any way? I paid them for incredible retail price of expensive. Yeah, okay, so they're expensive, but we do believe that they're worth it. They are rated for 24-7 operation. They do come with 24-7 tech support, and of course they come with a longer warranty than most consumer grade drives. So they're rated for operation in anywhere from single to five drive operation within a single enclosure. Any more than that, you're gonna to wanna to step up to an SE. And the main point of all of this is we are gonna be putting these drives inside our N2. We have gotten a sponsorship from WD to do this. They're not giving us any money, but they're gonna be giving the local fire department like hundreds of dollars, which is actually very generous of them considering that we're gonna light their drives on fire, um, but then they'll hopefully still work to have us go down to their training grounds and actually do a, a simulation of burning down the NAS and then spraying it with water, which is exactly what this fireproof, waterproof NAS is designed to withstand. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw our two WD Red drives in here. So we've got an Allen key that's included for tightening these bad boys up. And we are gonna head down to the training ground to get this done. Remember, the way that this works is that it actually sweats liquid from this protective material around here, and then ventilation is still provided to the drives by having these heat sinks around here take in air from the outside. Now, the way that the N2 works, I go into this in more detail in my unboxing of all things, but the way that it works is that it is allowing air to pass through to cool the components inside while not allowing fire through by having a baffle on the front shield right here so that there's no direct line of sight for the fire and the flames to get into the drives themselves. So we're gonna close this up and I'm actually super excited to do this. I've been looking forward to this for a while. So we wanted to give you guys a quick look at the burn room that we'll be using. So here's the IOSAFE N2 NAS. Richard is loading in pallets that we're gonna to use to feed the fire, get her going, get her up to a pretty uh, unacceptable temperature for a normal hard drive. And then uh, we're gonna we're gonna douse it off with the with the hydrant and hose that you saw before. So let's just give you guys a closer look inside here at where we're gonna be putting it inside the burn room. All right, so we're loading up pallets, so go ahead, yep. And uh, so you can see there's like, uh, they, they use this pretty often. So I'm told that the fire kind of goes up here and curls around in the ceiling. And once Richard gets completely geared up, you were saying how close can you get to, to this fire? Right about here, probably. <laughs> All right, so basically you can stand right next to it. And about how hot are we expecting this to get? I uh, could see around 800, 900 probably. So 800 to 900 degrees Celsius, we've actually got a thermal imager that we're going to be using to verify the temperature. And the, uh, the IOSAFE NAS is being positioned right here. So this is, this is going to get pretty toasty. Is this pretty realistic for what you'd expect for if this thing was actually in a house fire, what it would be subjected to? This is probably worst case scenario. This would be around the most flammable heat uh, <laughs> creating objects you could possibly imagine. You know, this would be sandwiched between couches and drapes and basically all the worst things you could imagine. Excellent. So here we're doing a quick run through of how the thermal imaging camera works. So uh, check this out. There's a bunch of different modes, but uh, I'm gonna go with, oh, I don't know. Let's just go with the most sort of colorful, interesting one. You can see Slick's hand pops out, whether it's in red or whether it's in white here or whether it's uh, white is hot, black is hot, all the different things can be hot, but let's just go to the super colorful one because that one looks like lots of fun. So go ahead and pull your hand away from the door. And you can see it actually still remembers where, where he touched it. So if we look inside the room, we can see the pallets right here, and we can also see the IOSAFE uh, NAS right there. 
this uh, particular, yeah, there's, there's Slick standing there. So this particular cinder block was out in the sun and the pallets were out in the sun. That's why they're quite a bit hotter than the rest of the inside of the room. So we're here with Captain Brian Yule, who is overseeing the operation here today. And just, just to be clear, Township of Langley Fire Department doesn't endorse the IO Safe N2 NAS or anything like that, but they have very generously given us a pretty good cost on helping us out here with testing it, um, according to sort of what we agree is, what we'd say is kind of a reasonable simulation so how long is this gonna run uh, we anticipate it'll run about 20 to 25 minutes depending on the temperature we can get it to and that is your typical uh, well typical uh, time frame from when a fire starts to people notifying the fire department that they've got a fire in their house and to the temperatures that it will get to once we once we uh, arrive in our typical response time which is around eight minutes okay so uh, wow really yeah that's correct Wow, that's outstanding. Okay, so we're gonna hit probably you said around eight hundred to a thousand degrees peak. Yeah, we're gonna target we're gonna target in the eight to nine hundred degree range. Over a thousand degrees, it starts to break down the gunite on the walls, which is our fire our fire coating for the walls. But uh, we're gonna shoot for approximately nine hundred degrees at the seat of the fire. Okay, and then this is gonna be pretty much uh, what you'd consider to be a pretty worst case scenario in terms of. Correct. Having having a fire start right next to next to the the tar target target whatever you want to call it is worse, definitely worst case scenario. All right, so Richard, tell us about this gear. What do you got here? Uh, well, we got our mask, uh, kind of self-explanatory. Uh, is it self-explanatory, sir? Is it? Well, and uh, I know there's a lot of gamers that watch this channel. I'm a gamer myself. So this is actually a HUD. This is my head that's up display. Uh, so this displays lights to let me know how much air is in my pack. Uh, I've got my clear command. This is a speaker. There's a speaker right in the uh, mouthpiece. It allows everyone to hear me. It's extremely hard to communicate when you're in a fire, so that's what you use that for. Then of course we have the SCBA, which is the air bottle and uh, the backpack. I have my radio, which I'll be on, and I have our tick, which is our thermal imaging camera, which uh, I believe you just showed off. All right, so it's fire time. Uh, Richard, you got, what is, what is this, uh, sorry, what's this torch called? Tiger torch. All right, light her up. That looks like fun. That looks like lots of fun. We ready to go? We're ready to go, let's do it, let's light this thing. So in he goes, because he's only lighting it right now, it's okay for Richard to go in without his uh, full breathing apparatus and all of that noise. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna light her up, get on out of there, we're gonna close the door and then we're gonna check on it at maybe three or five minute intervals, have a look at it with the thermal imaging camera, maybe leave it open for just a, just a couple seconds here so that they can get the fire starting. Yes, we are legitimately lighting this thing on fire, folks. So we're gonna check on it every few minutes and see if it needs to be stoked, uh, see if we need to do anything to, to help make sure that we're reaching the temperatures we're going for here, which as a reminder is around 800 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. So before he goes in, you want to tell us how he's going to put out the fire? Yeah, Richard's going to perform what's called an indirect attack, where he's going to uh, shoot a modified fog, which is about 30 degrees at the ceiling for two seconds. He's going to let the steam from the water droplets rain down on the fire. It'll help darken it down. Then he'll narrow his pattern a bit and then attack the fire directly on. Should only take a couple of minutes. Here he goes, guys. You want to give the uh, NAS a good spray just for good measure? <laughs> I can't see it at all.
All right, so we're surveying the damage. Now, on the left side of the unit here, you can see the steel enclosure didn't really discolor too much and didn't really bow out too much, although it did bow a little bit. Whereas on the right side, where it was right next to the fire, even in the fire, it has discolored. And if you get an angle of it kind of from the front here, you can see it actually bowed out a fair bit. So it was, it was warped and deformed. The front ports, the front USB port, the uh, SD card reader, these are just empty holes now because all the plastic surrounding them has completely melted away. You're not intended to reuse this NAS. You send it to IOSafe, they put new drives in a new NAS and transfer your data onto that and send it back to you. That's how the whole service works. Now here on the back you can see the only thing left of the cooling fan for the unit is the four screws around the outside. Other than that it's just a mass of melted plastic and this is a little bit surprising but the uh, gigabit ethernet port and the two USB 3 ports at the back kind of survived but then the uh, the power input did not so once again I wouldn't even begin to consider firing this thing up har 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 kind of survived as in after they, it's been fired up yeah kind of survived as in they like still have color but they wouldn't work <laughs> just putting that out there so here we are guys we see a bit of a sharp contrast here between the destroyed NAS and the replacement NAS. Now you would normally ship this thing back in its current state to IOSafe. You would not do any of these, uh, any of this taking apart on your own because, wow, it's like, you hear that sound? Oh. Okay, because uh, you, you don't know what you're doing and you don't know what you're getting yourself into necessarily with respect to sort of water, the water seals having water getting into them or whatever, whatever other problems there might be. You want to be real careful about this and just let IOSafe take care of it for you. But of course, we're not that patient. So we wanted to just take this bad boy apart and show you guys what's up. So you can actually see the material that we had inside the N2 has uh, got some sort of burn marks on it here, especially around the edges. But you can also see that there's still some condensation on the inside of the plastic sheathing that's over top of it. And right here up against where the drives are, there's no, no burn marks at all. You can also see that on the right hand side, or well, I guess it would have been the, the yeah, the right hand side of the unit um, is much more burned than the left hand side of the unit. And that was because the fire was right there up against it. So that was, that was where it took the brunt of the damage. Okay, so next up, we've got the actual aluminum housing inside. You can see there's more, uh, more scorch marks. Okay. So the aluminum housing here serves a couple of purposes. Number one is that it keeps the hard drives cool under normal operating conditions. So that's where the airflow sort of covers and it's got some heat sinks on it. Number two is it acts as the waterproof seal for the unit. So that keeps the water from the fire hose out. So we're gonna go ahead and try and pry it off here. Okay, so we just managed to pry it off with a fork. I suspect what happened is the gasket around the outside probably melted a bit. And it looks like that may or may not have been the case. Actually, it's in, uh, it's in not bad condition, all things considered. So um, yeah, it looks like just around this one edge on that one side where the fire was touching the NAS almost the whole time. That's the only place where we see any kind of a problem here. So let's start with the drive that probably got it a little bit easier in terms of the abuse that went on. Okay, so it looks pretty normal. You wouldn't know that that was sitting in a fire for uh, 20 to 25 minutes. All right, now the abused one. Here we go, guys. Let's go ahead and pull this out. It is highly recommended, actually it is required, that you let your drives dry out completely before reinstalling them in another enclosure or doing anything with them. Um, our enclosure didn't really get that wet and I don't think that the waterproofness uh, was penetrated at all and there isn't really any moisture left in the device to, to go inside here and bother it. So we're probably gonna be able to pretty much fire these babies up and I'll let you guys know if, if they still work. I mean, look at this, this was in this way and there's no, no perceivable damage to it at this point in time. So we're gonna keep the camera rolling and we're just gonna time lapse this because I want you guys to know that there's no faking and no switcheroo going on here. If these drives have data on them, they survived a 25 minute fire.
No way! My precious, my precious pictures. So there you have it, guys. I, I'm, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. Um, IOSafe told me it was going to work, but still, you saw that fire. I mean, uh, look at this enclosure. Oh, it's so heavy. Look at the way that this side bowed out. I mean, we abused this thing to the point where I wasn't necessarily that, you know, convinced that anything was going to survive it. Look what happened to the cooling fan in the back. That, it's, I mean, it's gone. It's obliterated. You can smell it when it's closed. I know, you can still smell it, even, uh, even now. So, uh, the idea is not to keep using these drives. The idea is to pull all the data off of them and use different drives now, which of course IOSafe takes care of. But there you have it, guys. My precious memories are still on the NAS. Let's even see if we can play back uh, Big Buck Bunny. Oh, it's an MKV. Okay, well, we'll play back like, oh, MOV. Okay, MP4. Yes, open with Windows Media Player. <laughs> Look at that. There's the old NCIX Tech Tips intro playing off of two hard drives that were sitting this far away from a thousand degree Fahrenheit plus fire. <laughs> uh, thanks for checking out this video. Huge thanks to IOSafe, who sent us two of their NASs to make this happen, and then WD, who paid for us to go to the training facility and set the whole thing on fire. Other than that, uh, this is just a Linus Tech Tips video, so there's, uh, there's no sponsorship beyond that, so we were as interested as anyone in finding out whether this whole thing was going to work. And that's, again, that's one of the reasons we brought in a second sponsor to fund us lighting it on fire, because WD ultimately doesn't have anything invested in whether or not this NAS works, but I'm sure they're happy to know that they have something fireproof to recommend to their customers at this point. So uh, there you go, guys. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if for whatever reason you disliked it. I thought it was awesome, though. Leave a comment letting us know what you thought. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.